Alleluia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Alleluia. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. Holy, holy. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may in past Amy we join our faith with your wonderful people here this morning. Minister to them, touch them, strengthen them, heal them, deliver them, encourage their faith through the word of God, someone who is at a low place this morning, battling oppression, depression, loneliness, for some suicide, we rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Take your hands off of them, devil. You're a liar and the father of all lies. Jesus defeated you over 2,000 years ago. You are a defeated foe. You are defeated. The word of God declares, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? We resist you this morning. For the word of God declares, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Minister to your people this morning. Make the word so simple that even a child could understand what the Holy Ghost is saying. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. So on this morning, we are continuing our series, The Necessity of Faith. You know, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God because whoever comes to God must believe that he is and he that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. We know what Hebrews 11 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. But on this morning, I want to talk about a divine override. This is why I want to talk about this as we are in this series on faith. Because faith is not the only way God heals people. Remember blind Bartimaeus? Of course, he had faith. We know the woman with the issue of blood. She had faith. There's a whole lot of people. Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. But I want to talk about mercy healings. I want to talk about the sovereignty of God, where in some cases in the, new, in the Gospels, faith was not even in the picture, but it had everything to do with the mercy of God and the sovereignty of God. You can't put God in a box and say, this is the only way God is going to do it. Because the minute you try to put him in a box, he's going to bust that thing wide open and do something totally different. One blind man, he spoke the word. Another blind man, he laid hands. Another blind man, he spit on the ground and made clay and tell him, go wash. You just can't tell God how to do it. But what I want to focus on in the next four teachings in this subject is I want to talk about mercy healings and the sovereignty of God. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get into the word. Let's go to the book of John chapter 5 beginning at verse 1. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, 
was the Pool of Bethesda with five covered platforms or, or porches surrounding it. Now watch this. Crowds of sick folks, lame, blind, uh, or with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platforms waiting for a certain movement of the water. And I'm reading from the Living Bible. Verse 4 says, For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water, and the first person to step down into it afterwards was healed. So when you look at this passage here, this had nothing to do with, it. look, it had everything to do with this angel that would come down and, and trouble the water, and whoever got in the water first was healed. I mean, it didn't take much faith. I mean, they can see what was going on. You see what I'm saying? But watch this. You'll see where I'm going with this. Now watch. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. You know, sometimes people can become so ill that they, they can't even think straight, much less talk about how faith, I mean, if someone's in a coma, would, would, how can you require faith from that person? They, they don't even know what's going on. They got in a car wreck and they knocked out coal. Are you listening to me? Remember that scripture where it says, he could not do any mighty works there because of their unbelief, save or accept. He laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. I was so happy. I was listening to a Greek scholar, Rick Ren. I love to listen to him. But listen to this. He was explaining the word sick folk there. The word sick in the Greek is aristos. And it literally means people who are comatose or in a coma. That means when it says he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them, it was people who were just, that they didn't even like know what was going on. That that's how ill they were. And in a situation like that, how can you say that person, they better have faith. I mean, give me a break. The person don't even know what's going on. Come on, somebody. But that's where the mercy of God comes in. That's where the sovereignty of God comes in. And I know this whole series is the necessity of faith. But I felt compelled by the Holy Ghost to take a little detour here and help you realize that faith is not the only way God heals people. Sometimes he heals people because of his mercy, because of his sovereignty. He is God and besides him there is no other. You can't tell him how to do it. Are you listening to me? Watch this. So this man, the Bible says, one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked this man, would you like to get well or do you want to be made whole? Watch this. This man don't even know who Jesus is. <laughs> and watch how he answers. He says, I can't, the sick man said, for I have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water. While I'm trying to get there, someone else always gets in ahead of me. Jesus is right there talking to this man. He has no idea who Jesus is. He's more focused on the pool that the angel would trouble the water. And he's getting upset that no one, every time he tries to get into that pool, someone else jumps in before him. And he's, he had been sick for 38 years. And Jesus is talking to this man. He have no idea who Jesus is. So how can he have faith in Jesus to be healed when he don't even know he's talking to? <laughs> but this is where the mercy of God, I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. Glory to God. Somebody, come on, just lift your hands to heaven. Somebody about to get a divine override. Mandebo shika talabara masaya. And when I'm talking about healing, in this ministry, we see a lot of physical healings, but not only physical healings. There are people who, who, who are broken and torn up on the inside. One of our partners, Stacy and his wife, Genevieve. Genevieve was suffering from church hurt for a long time, and she's going to share a testimony one day. But she got healed internally. You know, when in Luke 4, 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The first healing Jesus mentions is healing those who are internally broken up, wounded, 
bleeding on the inside. And maybe that's what you need this morning. We serve a merciful God. Sometimes he gives a divine override and heal people where there's no faith involved because he is God all by himself. And I don't know about you, there were times in my life I had no faith. And God came through for me. Come on, if you can bear witness to what I'm saying, somebody type below this video right now. Say, Pastor Sean, I am in agreement. There were times in my life I had no faith. I had given up. And God still came through. And you're wondering how could he come through when you had no faith. He came through because of his mercy, because of his sovereignty, because of his love towards you. He hasn't forgotten about you. You may be tuning into this broadcast this morning, and I know we're talking about the necessity of faith, but you have no faith this morning. I want you to know you're going to be just all right because there is something called the mercy of God, the sovereignty of God, and the love of God. He is a compassionate God. He cares about you. Just like he cared about this man, who was in this situation for 38 years and every time he tried to get in the river that the angel troubled, tried to get into that pool, someone else got in before him. And look, there was a multitude, the King James says, there was a multitude of sick people and Jesus slipped past all of those people and came to this one man. In this situation, Everybody did not get healed. One man was about to get a miracle and Jesus was about to vanish away into the crowds. Kandala Babasaya. You are that one person this morning that he's about to touch. You are that one person this morning that he's about to restore. You are that one person this morning that's about to get a mercy healing. Are you listening to me? Now watch this. Jesus told him in verse 8, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat and go on home. Wow. <laughs> Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. A man was paralyzed for 38 years. But it was on the Sabbath when this miracle was done. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry that sleeping mat. It's amazing what some people are focusing on when Jesus just healed this man. The man who healed me told me was his reply. He says, the man who healed me told me to carry my mat. He didn't know who Jesus was. He said, the man who healed me told me to carry my mat. He didn't even know who Jesus was. That's the mercy of God. I am so glad that he was willing to give me a divine override. I was on my way to a crisis. Hell, I wasn't even studying God. But he arrested me. January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning. The presence of God came at that kitchen table where I was sitting there talking with a friend. His name was Heston Dane, a strong Christian young man at that time. Strong. Christian. He was young. He's not young anymore, of course. And when the presence of God came to that kitchen table, I ran in that bedroom and fell on my knees and broke and wept. My friend wasn't even preaching. He was a Christian. I wasn't, but he wasn't even preaching to me. We were just having a good time talking and laughing as young men. The mercy of God. Thank you, Jesus. And so they said, who said such a thing? They demanded. The man didn't know and Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now you are well. Don't sin as you did before. Something even worse may happen to you. But what I want to focus on here is he was healed without faith. He was healed because of the mercy of God, because of the sovereignty of God, because of the love of God. He got a divine override. Who would say this morning, Pastor Sean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm at a low place in my life. 
I didn't gave up. I don't even feel like God can do. I don't even believe God can do it anymore. I, I just threw the towel in. You're going to be just all right because God is about to give you a divine override. There were many times in our lives we didn't have faith and God did it. Because of his love, because of his mercy, because of his compassion. Oh, the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody this morning. You may be sick in your body and you say, Pastor, I gave up. I have no faith. God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. He is God all by himself. A divine override. Give your people a divine override this morning, God. Give them a divine override. Some people have lost faith. Some people have waved the white flag and just given up, God. But I'm asking you this morning, give them a divine override. Like you did this man in the book of John 5. You heal them because of your mercy and your love and your grace and your kindness and your compassion, Lord. Do it for your people this morning. Touch them in their spirit, their soul, their bodies, their mind. Let the healing virtue of the Holy Spirit flow into their body because of the mercy of God this morning. Because of the sovereignty of God. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. And we sing, oh, oh. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. And we sing, oh. You are my healer, Lord. You are my healer, Lord. Father God, touch your people this morning. Drive that sickness out of their bodies. Come on, lay your hands on yourself. Lay your hands on yourself. Lay your hands on that part of your body where you believe in God to touch you and have mercy on you. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, Lord, have mercy on me and heal me. You are my healer, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we sing, oh, oh, what an awesome God we serve. What a mighty, compassionate, loving, kind God we serve. Thank you, Jesus, for ministering to your people this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Stay right there in that flow. Listen, he loves you this morning. Someone under the sound of my voice, you just need to surrender your life to Jesus. Just pray the simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. You died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it with all of your heart, let me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. I want you to type below this video, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Welcome into God's family. We ask you to do three things. First thing we ask you to do, pray, which is simply talk to God on a daily basis. And at the end of that prayer, you say, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we created a booklet for you. It's called First Steps in a New Direction. Scan that QR code. 
download that booklet. We encourage you to pray, which is talk to God. The second thing we ask you to do is begin reading the gospel of the book of John. To do this, we created a ministry app that have several free translations of the Bible. You can scan the QR code, download our ministry app from Apple Play or Google Play Store. Just download that. Download the apps, the Bible apps that's on that app and begin reading the Gospel of John. Thy word is a lamp. David said, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God will use the word of God to equip you, to teach you, to speak to you, and to encourage you. Third thing we ask you to do, if you live in the DFW area, join us at Miracle Healing Center Church in McKinney, Texas. 1351 South Harden Boulevard, right here in the city of McKinney. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. at Cockrell Middle School. And if you can't meet us in person, join us online. Become a part of our MHC eChurch family. We would love to have you a part of our online family. We love you, we appreciate you, and we'll never take you for granted. To support the work of God, the preaching of the gospel, visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have downloaded the Sean Pinder Ministries app. Amen. You can give through that app as well. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash up account. That address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. That address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you and thank you, our wonderful partners and viewing audience, for your support and your prayers. God bless you. See you again on tomorrow morning on another morning prayer broadcast.